All right, so I'm doing this video. This is for beginners and to intermediate who are having trouble with taking doubles and taking triples. I know how you feel. And this, like I said, this is for beginners because people that have been doing this a while, you have your little system that works for you. But if you don't, and I'm getting a lot of comments about I'm afraid to take doubles and triples, you have to develop a system for yourself. I'm gonna tell you how I do it to make it simple in my mind, okay? I, this is only the way it works for me to get me in and out of the store quickly, efficiently, and not mess up orders, have stuff go into another order, that kind of stuff. Before I even get in the store, you have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're gonna, it's like going out on stage and not rehearsing beforehand, okay? You can't do that. You have to rehearse. You have to look at the items before you go in there and say, you know what? Order A has all the heavy items, the case of water, the milks. Order B just has small stuff, little produce stuff that could fit in a basket. Even though I'd like to have A on top and B in the basket, just because that's the way my mind works, it doesn't always work like that because A this time had the cases of water. So A is gonna be on the bottom, B will be on the top. So I'm gonna show you a double. Let's just go through it real quick. I'll show you how I think about it and then it'll kind of make sense to you. But you have to, the whole idea of doing doubles and triples is knowing what you're gonna do before you get in the store. When I do batches, double batches and triple, I do one order at a time. I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, ah, I like to do them, just go down the aisles. You go down the aisles and you take all, and you split it up as you go. I used to do that and it ended up, you know, about the same, but it's just in my mind, it's easier for me to do order A, finish it up all the way up to the frozen stuff. You know, don't do the frozen stuff. Don't pull, put ice cream in, in, in an order and then you have 25 items to do for the second order and the ice cream said, no, you know, that's not cool. Just use your head. So you do an order all the way up to the frozen stuff. Then I do order B. That's, that's what makes sense for me to keep it organized because once I'm finished with order A, I don't have to think about it anymore. I never think about separating anything, right? But that's just the way I do it. So let's go through a double order. Now, when you do order separately, the way I do, you will backtrack the store, but it doesn't take that much extra time. And if you know the layout of the store, it's not a problem. But can I please ask you to subscribe and it doesn't cost you anything. It's really gonna help me do these videos. You can see I haven't done one in a while. The reason why is I have family. It takes time to do these videos. I, I want to help the people that want to get their income up to that uh, 1,500 per week, at least 1,200 per week, you know, in the areas that don't have the Prop 22. I'm trying to help you take as many batches as you can from as many stores as you can, because that's the whole idea. It's not just taking one store and trying to get big batches. It's being able to take stores that other Instacarters are not going to take. It's being able to take batches that other Instacarters are afraid to take. That's what you got to do. Anyway, please subscribe. Let's take a look at this double. It's, it's simple. Let's, let's take a look at it. Now you can see it has 27 items. They're split up evenly. It's not like a simple, simple where one's got 25 and the other one's got three items. This is 15 and 12. So I'm looking at A. Um, the only thing in A that I see that's big is the creamer, the tea, maybe the bagels might take take up some space, right? Let's take a look at B. B's got the bigger items, the bread, the two milks. Now, everything else could fit in a basket, even those crustables are a little bit big. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put B on the top, but everything but the milks. The milks, I'm going to put another basket on the bottom just to separate it. I don't have to. I could just put the two milks there and that's it. But I'm going to separate it with the basket. That way it'll have a little barrier so I can put all of A down there. Okay, so I'm going to have B on the top with the two milks down on the bottom in a separate basket and then A on the rest of the thing. So let's take a look at it. Obviously, as soon as you uh, walk in the store, you know, you transition the batch, you, you go in. You always send the greeting. Always send a greeting. That's, that goes without saying. You always send greeting. And I do the same one. I do the custom greeting. It's professional, you know, and, and it's, it's at the same time, it's friendly. It's not too professional. Okay. So 
I'm looking here, I'm gonna grab my basket. I'm gonna go in, I am going to grab the little, uh, two of the little basket, right? And um, I'm going for my one basket, that's for my milks. I'm gonna put my two milks down there, okay? Then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna shop, that's the rest of the day. Now, here is a first example of how you can make extra money on tips. They didn't have the thing. Babies sometimes are particular, moms are particular about what the babies want. So even though she said refund, okay? Even though she said refund only, a lot of people do refund because they don't wanna be bothered on the app while I'm shopping. They just, just, if they don't have it, just refund it. I don't want you to bother me. But I've kind of learned just by fishing, don't worry about that. Try to get the replacement. Because remember, we don't want to replace anything. We don't want to replace anything. That just lowers our pay. In fact, we want to sell them more stuff. So I love it when people are adding items, right? So, and it only takes a second. And I've never had anybody say anything bad like, hey, I told it, I, I put refund in there, just refund it. And you're just trying to be helpful. So this is how I handle it. It even said refund, right? So I showed her, I snapped her some pictures. She came back and she said, refund, please. I said, so, so, okay, no problem. I, I'm gonna refund it per your request. As I'm shopping, if you decide, you know what? I'll, I'll try it, and that happens a lot. I'll try this. Maybe he'll like this, right? Boom. Yeah, go ahead and get those, the stackers, the strawberries or whatever, uh, the snack or whatever, you know? So that's how I approach it, okay? And then she says, no worries. So I know she's a nice person. She's respectful. She's answering me, right? It tells me something about her. She's appreciative of my efforts, all right? So I'm, I'm done. Even though it says up there, even though it says that uh, she's been notified, and that there's no more changes allowed once I'm in checkout. There's probably a message that tells her I'm on the way, but it might be assumed. I just put my message in there anyway. This this goes on every order. As soon as I'm on the way to your house, because I want the person to know I'm on the way. I don't wanna to have to guess at something if I can't find your apartment or your house or anything. I don't wanna to have to be out there stranded having to call chat support with groceries in the car because I can't get a hold of you. And she's already been in touch with me, right? So I'm just letting, you know, hey, I'm on my way. You know, if it's over 15 minutes, I put uh, that same message and then ETA, 15 minutes. I let them know I'm going to be pulling into your driveway. So don't act stupid like, who's this guy? Okay, it's just common sense for customer service. You keep in contact all the way through, right? That way they also know, get those dogs out of the yard. Handle stuff, your food's coming, okay? You dig? This is why you always open a line of communication with every single customer, starting with that custom greeting when you first start the batch. I want them to communicate with me. I wanna know that they know that I'm in the store, I'm getting your stuff, and I'm gonna be on my way. It's important for two reasons, and two reasons are essential. One, if things are out of stock, I don't care if they put refund only, I'm still gonna try to sell them stuff, okay? Because they want an item. They just put refund only because other shoppers probably gave them a bad experience and they're like, you know, I don't wanna be bothered. Just don't replace it because you get bad replacements. They've had bad service. They've never had anybody uh, ask them about a replacement. They just went ahead and replaced it and they're like, man, these guys picked terrible, re just put refund only. But when you send a picture, you're showing effort and that, and I'm telling you, 75 to 85 percent of the time they're going to say yeah i'll go with that even after they put refund it believe me i've done over seven thousand batches i'm telling you i've encountered a lot of problems but there's two main reasons one for the out of stock things you want to communicate you want to get them what they want don't just replace stuff to replace to get them what they want some replacements you can do without asking them you know if it's just a larger size or something like that on the same product but the second reason, the second reason is the delivery. I don't want you to not know that I'm on the way to your house. Get the dogs out of there. Make sure I have the gate code. These are all things they need to know 
if you open a line of communication, believe me, there, there's never a problem. But when you don't have any communication, now granted, there's about five, 10% of them that even if you try to communicate, they just won't. But most of them already have the gate code in the description. They already have stuff in the delivery instructions for you. But hey, why chance that? Open a line of communication with the customer. Be nice. Let them know you're working for them. Make them feel like they have somebody that cares about what they're doing working for them. Not just somebody that, oh, they're going to have to hope that everything comes out correctly. I don't want that. That's not how you're going to get tips. It's all about customer service. Open a line of communication. Please start it when you start the batch. It shows that you're professional. So let's, let's get back to it. All right, so I'm letting her know, hey, there it is. I'm on my way, you know, and, and it's a done deal. So that's how I handle the double batch. It's not rocket science. You know, I didn't do any video footage of me putting the groceries in the car, but you have to have your own little system there too. Cause once you get two big batches, you have to do it right. You know, with, uh, with my car, there's a little compartment underneath. I can put order a down there. And then you close it up and you put order B on the top or the other way around because you're going to deliver A first. All right. But anyway, that's how you do a double. If you got anything out of this video, I, I really would appreciate you hitting the like button, passing the video on to somebody who might be trying to learn how to boost their income with this thing. Stop waiting for those big bangers, big unicorns. Stop waiting on them. You're going to get those. But take the little ones and don't worry about the FOMO. All right. Don't worry about missing out. You know, I'll tell you something R real quick before I end this video. I did an $80 Uber Eats. It was a pickup from Vons. As I'm waiting, a 63 came in for Instacart. Had to let it go. A 30 for 12, one mile delivery at the same store. Had to let it go because I was on an 80. But you see the works out there. It's not just in my area. It's in your area too. You have to find it. You can drive up to my area and spend time on money and gas, but you're going to get up here in amongst wolves, amongst competition, amongst a lot of people swiping. I'm telling you, you're going to make the same in your area. But if you want to come up here, that's fine. Do it. You can sit right next to me and I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. If you follow the herd, you're going to get the herd's results. And most of the time, the herd's results are... <laughs> bupkis anyway good luck to everybody i want you to make money go do this it's, it's not that hard you know mix in uber eats when instacart is slow and don't get fomo just take the right uber eats and take the right uh batches for instacart where you make the hourly wage if you do a 15 dollar batch you should be in and out of that store in six seven minutes on the delivery for 10 15 minutes if possible that's 25 minutes for 15 bucks it's 30 bucks an hour you want to make that wage go for the hourly wage don't go for the believe me you're going to get the big batches and there's going to be ones where you're like oh man that's great i made 40 50 an hour on that but the 30 dollars an hour is the average that you want you don't want to go too far below that because then it becomes you like you feel like a chump for doing something for 15 bucks and you spend an hour on it right so go for hourly wage all right, good luck to everybody. Peace.